We left off on item number 74, which is the ordinance pertaining to medical marijuana facilities and amending various sections of chapter 39. It is a public hearing. As such, we will take up the public um, first in terms of speaking. I do have... I, 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 Mayor, I, yes. I thought this... I, Um, Monica, I, can we confirm? I think that item was continued. No, it was seventy four. No, it no, wasn't. Okay. The deferral okay. failed. Okay. Okay. So at this time, we're on item number seventy four. Okay. I'm going to open open it up for audience participation. On this particular item, you will have two minutes to okay. speak, as it is a public hearing item. Okay. The first person that I have um, up to speak is Bruce Varaman, and then stand back. And if you could make your way down, Jesse Scipio and Sabina Contreras, so I can keep it moving. We have like 14 speakers. Okay, thanks. Hello, thank you. Uh, my name is Bruce Vanneman. I am a licensed cannabis patient from Colorado, business entrepreneur, licensed in multiple states, and worked on the rules and regulatory committee in multiple states, including Colorado. I have right here for the commission the actual bill we used in Colorado, it's eight pages long, the Denver City, uh, City and County of Denver rules for regulating marijuana and dispensing cannabis. Mm -hmm. It's eight pages long, it's for your information to use freely. Some of the uh, amendments we wanna talk about here today, organization of about standalone buildings, that's not done in any state right now six foot tall fencing not required in any state at this time things of that nature we need to really consider the needs of the patients that we are talking about here the most disabled the most sick need safe and equal access to these facilities now in my experience of doing this in multiple states it's going to be a tough thing to do but working together i think we can do this. There are lots of things we need to work on right now that's reality versus perception on some of this stuff. The federal mandate for distance between schools mm -hmm. is 1,000 feet with variances for geographic restrictions, not 1,200 feet, as it says right here in your proposed ordinances. Or freestanding buildings, cultivation, odor control, safety procedures, all must be adhered to. There are good working models that we could go off of and make this transition for the patients very quick and easy, as long as it stays within the state's guidelines. Thank you for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is Stan Beck, followed by Jesse Scipio. Stan Beck, followed by Jesse Scipio, followed by Sabina Contreras. Okay, perfect, come on up. So we'll go, keep going. Good afternoon, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. My name is Sabina Contreras. I'm the Vice President of Green Acre Consulting Team. We're a cannabis consulting company in Braco. And I would like to address the following. The proposed ordinance does not reflect the spirit of Amendment 2. More than 6.4 million of in Florida voted for unrestricted access to medical marijuana. The ordinance that you're proposing is very restrictive on the access to patients for their medicine. I suggest to the commissioners uh, to get more education about uh, on the aspect. There are plenty of resources that you can take. We are here to help you too. We are consultants. We have consulted governmental entities. And I also agree with what Senator Geller mentioned at the beginning. Um, as uh, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, Senator uh, Geller and Commissioner Bogan uh, and Commissioner Holness also mentioned that uh, you should wait on this matter. We should wait for the Senate to, for the rules. There are six bills right now. We don't know what the Senate is going to say, and we should wait for them. Um, additionally, the proposed ordinance is outdated in the, its language. Um, the zoning laws that you guys are proposing or you're posting on the ordinance are outdated. 
Um, and uh, all the bills that have been filed on the Senate, uh, they call about the MMTCs, and uh, somehow the ordinance still reflects that you guys are talking about dispensary organizations, oh. I believe. Okay. So those, that's the you're, example that I can give about the outdated thank you. of the law. Your two minutes is up, even though the clock didn't. Uh -huh. Okay. Well. I'm sorry, but thank you so much. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker is Irvin Rosenfeld. Excuse me, ma'am. Jesse Scipio here. I think I was in order before. Oh, yeah. I called you. Yes, I was Hold waiting on one for second. It's uh, okay. Someone. It's okay. Okay, respect to everyone on the Hold on. on the you got to wait a second. Let me get you set up here. I okay, respect to everyone on the dais, uh, the mayor, commissioners. My name is Jeff, Jesse Scipio, and I live in uh, the community called Boulevard Gardens. And it's uh, near the area where you proposed for putting the marijuana uh, dispensaries and the, and the gross shops. Our area, as you know, is very uh, fragile, it's vulnerable, and we do have a problem with uh, illegal drugs already and prostitution, which does not lend to uh, an environment that's conducive for uh, bettering the lives of people that live in the resident. I am not against medical marijuana. Had my son had it, maybe he would his life would have been better, less pain, but uh, that wasn't the case. But what I'm against is you proposing to put them all in unincorporated areas, okay? And uh, that's something we have to deal with. Uh, my area uh, along 27th corridor is uh, affectionately called Tater Town. And there we, we sow uh, potatoes, and we don't want to be called Weed Town. We want to uh, go back to selling uh, spuds and not buds. <laughs> so I would... Uh, encourage and I en encourage you as our governing agents as you uh, to please reconsider consider your vote when it comes to the ordinance. Now the ordinance 1200 is fine. Make it 3,000, 4,000 from the places that you have established. I like the ordinance but the area or location do not put them all in our unincorporated areas. That's what I'm, I'm against. All right. As a governing agent I ask you to please reconsider your proposal about putting them in the unincorporated areas and uh, carefully consider the empirical evidence and not the theories of political data and vote no. Thank you. I think we need some clarification. Okay. Hold on, wait, 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 guys, relax, I, I'm here. Um, yes, so first of all, Mr. Scipio, the ordinance does not state that they all have to go in unincorporated areas. That is not the intent of our ordinance. The ordinance is to regulate them in Broward County as a whole. Unincorporated areas are included in Broward County. I can tell you from participating in the discussion with the seven companies that are already dispensing in the state of Florida that they are looking for areas that are one close to where the um, medical marijuana will be prescribed and based on population and use in that population. Those typically end up being more areas toward like um, hospitals, near the hospitals. So they're not necessarily all in unincorporated areas. And so I just wanna make that clarification for purposes of the people that are watching and for yourself. Okay, the information I got previously was in the area of the B3 zoning and specifically stated the corridor along 27th uh, Avenue. It went to uh, Sunrise and area around in the, in the information I got uh, previously. So now you're telling me that they're not uh, going to be in unincorporated areas. No, I'm not telling you they're not going to be in unincorporated areas. What I'm telling you is that this ordinance does not specifically place them in all unincorporated areas. This ordinance says that it is governing the Broward County. So that's all 31 municipalities. That's every area in Broward County. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. And right. since you brought me back, then why I know not? No, I didn't bring you back. I just wanted to clarify, but thank you. I'm going to keep moving with the speakers. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Mr. Irving Rosenfield and Heidi Hanford, followed by Senator Eleanor Sobel. My name is Irving Rosenfeld. I've been a Broward resident for 31 years. And I'm here to address a couple um, language in, in what you've written. On page two, it says, Whereas it is not the intent of the ordinance to interfere with legal prescription, the only two people in the United States that has a prescription for marijuana is myself. Here's my daily supply. I've been getting marijuana from the federal government for almost 35 years, 31 years here in Broward. I have a prescription. There's another woman in California, who actually Oregon, who has a prescription. We're the only two people in the United States with a prescription. 
Every other state is a recommendation from a doctor because they cannot prescribe a Schedule One drug. Or an order is what's stated in Florida, but not prescription. So I wish you would try to get that correct and lose the term prescription. That's on page two. Now, I've been smoking this medicine for 35 years from the federal government. I've been smoking it for 48 years total with my severe bone disorder. I've ingested more marijuana than probably anybody in the world. In fact, the Guinness Book of World Record turned me down, so they said nobody could beat it. Okay, my smoking of this is the way I titrate it. Now, in those 35 years, I've made oils, I've made edibles, I've made every concoction you can make with marijuana and try and see what was best for my condition. And that's what each patient and each doctor needs to decide is what's best. For me, it's smoking. It's that simple. And the Amendment 2 says full plant material. Full plant material does mean smoking. Last, what you're trying to confuse this Amendment 2 with is the low t uh, THC CBD. This is totally separate, completely separate. And to say seven dispensaries or can, can dispense to the entire state of 20 million, 20 million people, that makes it very expensive for the patient. Okay, we need vertical integration, not horizontal integration. We need horizontal integration, not vertical integration. We need dispensaries, a lot more dispensaries to service the patients, to where the patients then would get the best medicine possible at the least price. So I'm hoping that you all will keep that in mind. And through my company, My Medicine Consulting, we're glad to help you in any way we can. Thank you. Thank you. I just one more clarification. That's the whole purpose of us making our ordinance so that we can have more dispensaries and allow for um, to drive the price down. We have seven at this point in time in the state of Florida, according to the Compassionate Use Directory. Yes, and, and that so we change. are looking to go ahead and expand that. That's what this is about: is Excellent. making the law to expand it so that people can have access to medical marijuana. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. The next person that's up in queue is Heidi Hanford. Madam Mayor and Commissioners, thank you for your time, and I appreciate it very much. My name is Heidi Hanford. I am also I'm with My Medicine Consulting, and I have a unique position. I'm a patient navigator, and I've worked with integrative therapy with physicians and patients now since 2009 with multitudes of doctors across the nation. And it's very important to me that we have a good ordinance. And I'm going to tell you before my time runs out, I'm going to ask you to put in a three-month moratorium and send this ordinance back to the planners. We really need serious help with this, with all of the issues that are being brought up by people before me, and I'm sure people after me. Things I would like to highlight, especially since you're going to be looking at the entire county. Um, on page 14, the medical marijuana dispensing organizations, you need to fall underneath the state guidelines on that and just allow it to be to the state and what happens with that. So that way the businesses will be able to grow without additional restrictions by the county. On page 17, we talk about uh, cameras and 24-hour um, security, which is already mandated and would be required in these facilities, so you don't need to double down that effort. And the biggest thing that I am very, very, very concerned about in this ordinance that just made my eyes bug out of my head was on page 18. Any window signage must allow a clear and unobstructed view of the cash register and sales transaction from outside the building and in the normal line of sight. This is a cash-only business. We cannot put providers and patients at that risk. And if you ever go into a dispensary in another state, I've been in hundreds of them because I've been in multiple states, there are buzz doors where they're greeted, and in the beginning of the process, they're identified whether they should even be setting foot in that store before they're allowed through another buzz door to a reception area. So when you want to move the cash back to the front of the store, you're inviting theft and possible, I mean, these are the sickest of sick Floridians walking in these doors. We can't put them at further risk. So I really ask you to reconsider. Thank and you. if you go and look at what the city of Fort Lauderdale has done, their map is beautiful and they're working very well with the people. So Thank I hope you. you'll follow. Your time's up. Thank you. Okay. Madam Mayor, may I Senator, attorney uh, question before, I can't uh, hear him. It would affect the testimony? Hi, good afternoon. Madam Mayor, Hold on. Can you hear me? I, I, I can barely hear you. Madam Mayor, I'll, I'll talk louder. May okay. I ask the attorney a question? Because I believe that this will affect the testimony. Okay. Can you hold on one second and I'll get her back on? But um, yeah. I'm taking. Thank public, you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Commissioner Geller, we're in the middle of uh, public participation. I have I, Senator. I know. So I'm hearing and watching. Okay. But I think so that the, the question I have pertains to, I, I think that the people testifying. Uh, may testify differently depending on the answer to my question. 
Okay, can we go ahead? We're going to take the next three speakers, and then we'll go ahead and get you first. Can I do that? Because I want to let them speak and hear, hear what they have to say, and then you can go ahead and You're the mayor. ask the question. Thank you very much. Senator Sobel. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm here representing Kaicha Holdings, a veteran-owned uh, business that uh, would like to get a medical marijuana license. 587,638 people voted for medical marijuana in Broward County. As I looked at your ordinance, it reminded me of something called Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web was passed in 2014 and was amended in uh, 2016, and that was only restric restricted to uh, people with epilepsy and then with terminal illnesses. It was only meant to cover people with uh, those illnesses and roughly 1,000 to 2,000 people in the state of Florida. So I looked at your, 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 current, um, your current ordinance, and the ordinance is, is built on that, on that law. And I find that ordinance, that law, uh, limits you and the county and the people here very much. It, it, it's, it, the emphasis is on fraud and corruption. We, you need, you need, we need to revisit uh, what the statute says, uh, which was designed for a smaller population. Uh, for example, two, one of the examples, and, and the former speaker gave you uh, an example, two people need to be in a car when ma medical marijuana is delivered. Uh, that is really costly for any business. I mean, it is micromanaged to the nth degree, Charlotte's Web. It makes criminals out of people who sell, who buy, who grow, who deliver medical marijuana. So I would go back and look at uh, this, this ordinance that you're proposing and the statutes that you refer to. As mentioned before, there's going to be a meeting in Tallahassee in the Senate committee, I believe it's at, uh, March 23rd, that will look at uh, five bills. And I hope you will consider possibly uh, reviewing this at a later date uh, after the Senate does its work. Thank On the you. other hand, I just want to say this. Broward has always been a leader. Broward has, and you have all been leaders in our community. And I would like to suggest that you either put a moratorium on or read and amend the current uh, ordinance, the draft ordinance, which I think doesn't really do the job for the amount of people that are going to need the help. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker is David Kotler, followed by Sylvia Romero. I hope I said your name right. It's David Kotler. Okay, perfect. The next one is Sylvia Romero. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, everybody. My name is Sylvia Romero and I'm here to speak as a citizen of Broward County. I want to share my view of the marijuana as a medicine. I grew up in a conscious family that uses marijuana to heal illnesses. My dad made his own cannabis oil infused to alleviate, alle, alleviate re rheumatism arthritis. My neighbor has cancer and used medical cannabis, use edibles to alleviate, alleviate any pain from chemotherapy. And so on, there is more evidence of people that need this medicine. We need to educate ourselves of the healing or benefit of this plant. I believe that if we change our mindset of marijuana and remove the stigma, we can definitely have a better health. Marijuana has medical properties and is still illegal versus um, alcohol that has no any medical properties and, and remains legal in the states. I'm coming to all of you to create compassion for those people that need the marijuana with medical purposes. It's, I believe it is in all of your hands, you know, to, um, prove, pro, um, to make this possible for all the people that need the medical marijuana. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, that concludes our um, public speaking on item number 74. We are now back to this dais for discussion. I had in queue Commissioner Geller. I have the county attorney, 
You wanted to speak first, County Just Attorney? Just to know, Mayor, if you wanted to have County staff present um, a, a brief statement about what this I do want them to, to, and I think Commissioner Geller had a question for you that he had, he yes, was I, holding to ask you. That is correct, you. Madam Mayor. I have a question for uh, the County Attorney. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and ask your question, and then I'll have Ms. Henry call on her staff to make the, their presentation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Ms. Coffey, I have a, a question because I, I may be confused on this. I thought that this ordinance was only dealing with uh, the unincorporated areas in Broward County, which is roughly three. <laughs> uh, I heard the mayor indicate that this would be an ordinance affecting all of Broward County. And so my question to you, Madam Attorney, is what will this ordinance or these series uh, three motions accomplish? Is it only regulating conduct in the unincorporated areas, or is this an attempt to regulate conduct it, throughout the county? It is only regulating zoning and land use in the unincorporated area, which is about 1.4 square miles. Okay. So we're That's not what I home. thought. Okay. Um, yeah, Madam Mayor, I had thought that I had heard you say that this would regulate. Uh, I That's know I correct. Heard you say that this I stand would corrected. Throughout the county. Okay. Okay. I stand corrected. That was my question. Thank you, Madam but Mayor. But that doesn't mean that they're the all going to be placed in like on an unincorporated ground. That's correct. Okay. I believe there's only room for three in the county. Madam Mayor, I'd like to be in the queue also. Okay. No problem. I got you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay. Um, Ms. Henry? Yes, if I could have Joe Sisodia. Take your time. <laughs> so if you could start with <clears throat> the issues um, that were raised uh, regarding where they can be located and how many, and, um, and obviously you're there to answer any other questions um, that the commissioners may have as it relates to the unincorporated area. Certainly. Okay. Um, good afternoon, commissioners. I'm Jill Sosodi, the Director of Planning and Development Management. <clears throat> the regulations that you have before you are for medical marijuana based on what is currently allowed under state law. We are looking today at zoning in the unincorporated area of the county, which is the uh, areas of Central County, the areas of uh, other neighborhoods, but also some areas including the airport and areas out west that are unincorporated as well. Okay. So there are various different areas that are covered by the unincorporated area. Our total squ square, 11 square miles and a population of about 15,000. The proposed ordinance would create a major conditional use permit, which would be applicable to medical marijuana and to pain management clinics. This would require public notice and a public hearing before, before this board in order for an application for a medical marijuana facility to be approved. It allows dispensing only in the B3 commercial business district and it would allow cultivation, processing and ancillary dispensing in the M2 general manufacturing and industrial district. But for compatibility purposes, to make sure that these locations are appropriate, we are proposing to prohibit marijuana facilities within 1,200 feet of a school, a daycare, or a place of public assembly. That would include places of worship. Uh, maps were included as additional information in your packets uh, to show the, what those radii look like and to show which facilities, which areas would actually be available for these facilities. I would note that the 1,200 feet is the same as the 1,200 feet that is in existing in the code for the separation of pain, pain management facilities. Some of the media reports have uh, somewhat misrepresented the locations that would be potentially developable. And again, I would refer you to the attachment that shows the exact locations of those facilities. There are only three general locations in the county that would be able to be used for this. Uh, that is off 441, uh, one location is close to the airport and the other is uh, in the west area of the county. Again, in the unincorporated area in all cases. 
The proposed ordinance sets design standards for fencing, for having freestanding buildings, and for having on-site parking that's sufficient to accommodate the needs of the, of the businesses. I do not consider that the amount of parking that's requested is excessive. We are mirroring state law in regards to security, uh, given that these are cash-only businesses. And again, the ordinance provides for enforcement and it provides for an annual review of the certificate of use. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, so I think you probably should stay there because okay. I do have a queue. I have four commissioners so far in queue. Um, Ms. Henry, is there anything else you want to ask before we No, get no, that's it. I was just going to, there's a table and you can, if, you, if that would be easier, is the mic? I'm okay. There? I'm okay. You good? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Are we? She has is that yours? That's hers. That's your cr <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, you gotta sit down. Please have a seat. We'll make sure we get a mic no, to I'm you. I'm fine. You sure? Fine. Yes. Okay. All right. So the first commissioner is Commissioner Bogan, followed by Eudine, Holness, then Geller. Did I get uh, everybody? Sure. You, you, you said the ordinance says 1,200 feet separating from uh, a, a school, daycare, and a house of worship, but also a daycare center. Also, did you forget to say that they have to be 1,200 feet apart from each other? Dispensaries have to be 1,200 feet apart from each other, correct? That would also be true, but there are no sites in the three sites that are available. It wouldn't work because there are, none of the sites is big enough for to right. accommodate So, so my question is, why would you want to separate uh, dispensaries 1,200 feet apart when wouldn't it give more competition if one could be a couple doors down, you're a couple doors down, it'd be more competition if the dispensaries are closer um, and uh, so I understand about keeping the 1200 feet from the other uh, schools mm -hmm. and stuff but w wouldn't there be more competition by letting them be closer and, and making it more accessible to the public the intent was not to concentrate the businesses I, I, I'm not asking that question my question is wouldn't it be more convenient to the public and more price competitive to have them closer together so, you know, like car dealerships, you see them all near mm -hmm. to each other or whatever businesses. I mean, you know, if Barbers has one and I have one and, and, and Commissioner Udin has one, I mean, we're, we're going to compete with each other because we're right near each other. And so the consumer might say, oh, he's cheaper or she's cheap. You know, it, doesn't that make sense? Pardon me? You're, you're always going to be in the middle. But, um, but, but in all seriousness, doesn't it make sense to keep them closer so there's more either competition might bring prices down? Well, again, we were trying to follow the rules that were in place already for the pain management clinics, so that was why we came, we included that separation. But, I mean, certainly the board could take that out. Uh, I'm no, sorry. That, that's ahead. what I was getting ready to say. So this is, this is absolutely a, a decision that the board could make. If you wanted to have them more concentrated for that purpose, then you, you certainly have the ability to do that. And, it, you know, obviously you could make that argument. So would that be made in the form of, of an amended motion? Sure. So then, if, um, if I might, uh, to the vice mayor. Yes. There, since we're on first reading here, this is the first of two public hearings. You may wish to keep a list of proposed amendments um, individually because they may compete with one another. For example, there are different schools of thought on whether you concentrate unusual types of uses like this because it affects the character of a community or whether you scatter them. There are different thoughts on that. So my suggestion to you all is you hear all the different provisions that you have questions about, that you keep a list, I'll, I'll try to help you do that, and um, that the amendments be presented possibly at the second hearing. You can do it today, but it's, it's, you have another hearing, and it may be that you get other information between now and then before you present your amendment. I, I get the hint. <laughs> do you want to wait on your amendment? But, but yeah. no, I mean, uh, what's the purpose in... So we want to go all the way around first? And okay, then, great. And then I'll co you'll come back to me. Uh, we'll come back to you. Mr. Mayor, thank right. you. <laughs> Mr. Eudine. Uh, yes, just a couple things as I listen to the people from the public speaking about this. I think that it's important to really hash out that if you want to have, and I'm in support of the medical uh, marijuana, but th there's 31 municipalities within the county of Broward, and those municipalities, one by one, have come out and done moratoriums and done what, what they've, they've wanted to do. So this ordinance has zero bearing on that. This is just us sitting as the local planning agency of the unincorporated area making a zoning decision. 
if somebody wanted to build a car dealership, a gun store, a whatever, they would come to the local planning organization. And that's all we're doing here is in that 1.4 square miles of, of the unincorporated area of the county. So this doesn't prohibit a medical marijuana dispensing facility to go into Hollywood or Coral Springs or Weston or wherever and go through their zoning process to be in the non-unincorporated area. Because I think the gentleman that spoke from Boulevard Gardens, he makes an, that's the way it looks from the outside that everything is being pushed there. But it's not that every, it's, this is the exact opposite. We just wanted to get out in front when somebody's coming to make an application to locate their dispensing facility within that unincorporated area. So what we do here today has zero to do with any of the municipalities throughout the county, as I understand it, correct? Yeah, that's a good point, because a number of cities have done exactly what we're doing now. I know Hollywood has, I know a couple other. Right. Some and they've have, done their own zoning. Or moratoriums, own, right. or to wait, whatever yeah. they've done, the that has nothing that to do. the county attorney. Right. I don't think they can do an entire moratorium. I think they have to allow for it to be sold somewhere. But I think some of the cities have done moratoriums for a few months to wait until yes. different things Yes, but at come. some point they're going to have to zone for it. Uh, Commissioner Holmes. So wait, wait, I just have one more thing. Okay, so sorry. are we doing anything? So I understand what Commissioner Bogan says, and I, I, I consider that at a later time because I'm not sure what the correct answer is there. But I do know, I mean, as one vote, it must be 1,200 feet if that's what it is from the schools. I mean, I want it from a school, and I want it away from a daycare type of facility. Now, with that said, the point when I was in Colorado over the summer, the point of seeing everything through the window, through the cash, that's a valid point that we need to look at because this is a very high, and high cash business because there's banking issues with this whole thing. So I'd like to look at that when, when it comes back on second reading. I, I'm not saying one way or another. There, there might be a good justification for it. Um, and are we doing anything as far as vetting the seven participants that have these state licenses from coming into the county is there or is that doesn't apply to this this okay. is just strictly the zoning if somebody comes and says they want to do it we would just follow our zoning code uh, this ordinance pertains specifically just to zoning just to the zoning any of the seven can come in and then they would go through our zoning process and it would come up here and then we can make an inquiry on anything we want as far as their financial stability their wherewithal or whatever yeah, they would have to come and apply specifically for a conditional use permit, and that conditional use permit would come before this board. Okay, that's all I have. Commissioner Holders? Yes, and I do like the fact that it is conditional, that we get to weigh in uh, before it's finally issued. Uh, as to the issue of concentrating them all in one place, I, I don't know that any of us going to want that uh, next to our houses or close by, so that's something that I would say we need to consider. Uh, and our residents uh, are, as you heard from Reverend Scipio, his big concern is are we going to put them all in the unincorporated area? I'm glad that's clarified. It certainly is not going to be all in the unincorporated area. In fact, based on what's in front of us, we only have three potential sites in that 11 square mile uh, of, of the unincorporated area that we are the governing body of in terms of a municipal uh, district. And there's how many millions uh, square mile in Broward County urbanized area? Do, do you have any idea? 426. 426. So there's a million. There's a lot of, uh, of, of, of space in Broward County outside of the uh, Broad Municipal Service District, the unincorporated area where the cities uh, can regulate and, and put what they want in place. Uh, the idea that only seven companies can benefit from this troubles me tremendously. I think it's wrong. It's, it's basically enriching only a few at the expense of everyone else. Uh, and, 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 I, and, I, and I think we all ought to get the, change, the state to change that because that is not right. And, and certainly when it comes in front of us for, for these specific sites, I'm going to look to see who is looking to be inclusive and ensure that small business and, and the opportunities spread out in terms of these seven companies if they come here. That will be one of the things that I'm going to look at before I'm going to vote yes for any of them to 
uh, to get a, a, a site in the unincorporated area. The, uh, a, uh, county attorney, we had talked about putting a moratorium in place or, or at least deferring this item. And I heard uh, from many of the people who came before us that they would like to see us do that until things are settled. I still believe we ought to uh, do so. Uh, if this item doesn't get uh, four votes, uh, five votes, what happens? If it doesn't receive five votes to approve and take to the second hearing, yes. then it would it would die. Okay, so it is almost a deferral. It'd have to come back at another time. What would be the it process to, to bring it back? It would have to come back as an initial first hearing again. Okay, so if, if and I think we had before a deadlock of 4-4 on whether or not we put a moratorium in place. So if, uh, and this vote, four of us don't support it, will basically, well, put a deferral in place, I'm sorry. Uh, if four of us doesn't support it, it basically effectively defer it. Let me hear the attorney, please. It, it is not approved. At it that is point. not approved. It's, it's not the equivalent of a deferral. Yeah. And then you, there, there are some consequences. Um, your rules provide for a delay of six months before you can bring the identical item back again. Okay. Uh, Unless you waive that rule. So you would have to wait for six months if it doesn't get four votes. Unless you waive that rule. Or oh. unless it's changed materially. And, and, and we could waive that rule today. I think you would waive it at the time a sponsor seeks to bring it back. Okay. Uh, because I, I really believe there's, there's some things unsettled that we really need to work through as it pertains to the state and, and where they are and, and, and how this thing really pans out before we, we finalize the vote. I certainly understand the will of the voters, and the voters vote in favor of having this in place, so I'm not about to go against the will of the people. Uh, but what I think we ought to do is take some time to really uh, sort this thing through properly so we're making the right decision as we as we go forward. The next person in queue is Commissioner Geller. Commissioner Geller, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Can All you right. hear me? It's your turn. Thank you. Now, we're still on questions, correct? Wait, she's walking away. Go back. Josie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my you goodness we were done with you <laughs> i'm sorry commissioner <laughs> all right um thank you madam mayor um ma'am are you the one that actually drafted the, the ordinance because i have questions specifically on the ordinance and i don't know if that's you or if that's county attorney's office no that was the county attorney's office i would have to defer to them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, really. Uh, for example, because I had some questions on the smoking language, the constitutional language pertaining to um, what conditions would trigger it. Are those questions for you, for the county attorney, or for debate? Commissioner, why don't we take your questions one at a time, and I'll ask my task force to come up um, and, and share the podium with Joe so that... Um, the appropriate one can answer each question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Coffey. Um, let me know when you'd like me to proceed. You can proceed. Thank you. Um, in reference on page 6, line 12, the ordinance seems to specifically prohibit smoking of cannabis. I know with 100% assurance that the um, drafters of the amendment believe that, in fact, smoking is clearly permitted by that, uh, and they've cited certain uh, sections like Article 9, Section 29B4 of the constitutional amendment. Um, stating that cannabis means, quote, all parts of any plant of the genus cannabis, it goes on. So I know that, that the drafters of the amendment believe that smoking is part of the constitutional amendment. 
Why do you believe otherwise? Commissioner, let me interject here. I just want to be clear to the board and to those who are listening that this ordinance is based on the 2014 statute, not on Amendment 2. We're in a, a, a period of limbo because the legislature has not yet enacted implementing legislation for Amendment 2. So this ordinance is based specifically on the pre-existing statute. Doubtless, when a new statute comes out implementing Amendment 2, we'll end up with um, some revisions to this ordinance. But Ms. Coffey, you have just perfectly explained why I am opposed to passing this or to passing this on first reading and why I will end up voting against it, because I think that this is drafted towards the prior language, not the one that will be in place in the next five or six weeks. I have a second question, which you may give me a similar answer. Um, there was, uh, the mayor had stated earlier that there was constitutional language that, um, uh, that appears to limit, or the tracking uh, on that, that limits the uh, medicinal use to certain specified ailments. Um, do you, believe, do you believe that that's correct? Because that appears to directly contradict Article 10, Section 29, A, B, 1, which I have in front of me right now. Ms. Coffey, do you have an opinion on that? Commissioner, I, I'm having a little trouble following the question because I don't have those provisions in front of me. Um, we are aware that Amendment 2 covers additional conditions beyond the pre-existing statute but we can only propose to the board what is um, in effect today. It may even be before you come to second reading that there are different legal provisions effect in effect at the state level. I just can't, I can't answer that question today. Thank you, uh, Ms. Coffey. <coughs> Madam Mayor, I have extensive debate, but no additional questions. Thank you, Commissioner Geller. Commissioner Udine? Just a point of information. Mm -hmm. we, we voted to try and defer this, and now we've heard from our county attorney. We're working on an ordinance right now right. for a statute that we know to be outdated. Right. We know is going to be corrected mm -hmm. in six weeks. It's, it, it's such a waste of everybody's resources to do this now when we know in six weeks the rules are going to be all different. So I, do you want me to entertain a motion for I'll make another motion to defer to the end of this legislative session. I don't okay. want a moratorium. We can bring it back the first meeting after, but it just seems to be a waste of everybody's resources to do this right now. Okay. So I'll make That's that fine. motion. Okay, so a motion to defer will cut off all debate on the, on the item. So, Commissioner Geller, you will not be able to have vigorous debate now. <laughs> Because they are, they're, de he, you have a, right, I know, but I have a motion and a second to defer the item until after session. So you won't I be. I don't need to debate it if it's deferred, Madam Mayor. Okay, just making sure that you're okay with that. So we have a motion and a second, second for it. deferral till after the session. Yes, Monica? Um, I just want to clarify that. If you wanted to also include 75 and 76, since it was the original request mm -hmm. for the deferral of all okay. three together. Okay, no problem. Okay. Uh, I'll accept that as my deferral. So. I'll ask you tonight. I'm going to straighten this out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If I could make okay. a I need to do yes. them one at a time. I, I would suggest that you continue the public hearing item now that we've gone this far into it, and that will preserve the, um, the testimony that's been received, and then defer the, the two subsequent items. Okay, so 74 to May 9 and defer 75 and 76. And we're going to take them one at a time because I have to. Okay, so uh, we have a motion on the floor and a second to defer until May 9th, item number 74, to continue till May 9th, item number 74. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All aye. opposed? Okay, Minister Secretary, you caught Commissioner Gill. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you a question. Since we had this item up before and it failed, isn't the prevailing side that would need to bring this as a motion for it to go again? Am I correct or incorrect? Well, it did. It, the deferral um, of the item failed initially at a 4 4. Yes. So no one prevailed. Okay. Right. She's con right. He's continuing. Right. No problem. 
Now the deferral is coming for item number 75 and um, 76. So I'm going to have a, I have a motion and a second to defer item number 75 until May 9th. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Okay. Got that. Okay. Let the record show that that passes um, 8 to 0. Okay. Now on item number 76, I have a motion to defer until May 9th. So, so move. Okay. <laughs> then all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. You got that, Minute Secretary? Yes. Okay. Let the record show that that passes on 8 to 0. Okay, so that, that concludes all marijuana items. Um, we just ask that if you're leaving the commission chambers that you leave quietly, please. Okay.